Each month, we track hundreds of different tabletop, board, and card games that appear on store shelves, launch on Kickstarter, and are dusted off to revisit gamers' tables. It's just... There's so many games! So in this monthly series, we track the 10 with the biggest momentum in website traffic, online discussion, sales, and news, all of which are factors that give these games momentum. Hey there! I'm Chaz Marler with Watch It Played, and before we get into this month's biggest bounding boxes of bits, I want to first mention that today's episode is made possible, in part, by Kapow from White Wizard Games. In Kapow, players go head-to-head -head in a classic explosive clash of good versus evil. Now, this choice, to be either a hero or villain, will determine the player's starting traits, their dice, and unique abilities. Players then gain additional blank action dice with removable faces that can be customized to further enhance their character. The combination of choosing how to best grow your dice pool, how to customize your action die faces, and how to use each roll that you make all set the stage for an epic strategic showdown. Kapow recently funded on Kickstarter, but if you missed it, you can still make a late pledge right now and get it, plus additional Kickstarter exclusive items, and you'll find a link to all this stuff down in this video's description. All right, let's kick things off with Paleo, a cooperative adventure game set in the Stone Age, published by Z-Man Games in 2020. And, speaking of the Stone Age, what did the caveman say when he saw a flying pterodactyl? Look at that dino soar! Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, that joke was written by nine-year-old Timmy Spangler, the winner of our recent contest to be my co-writer for a day. Whereas... I clawed my way into this position after years of hard work producing literally thousands of hours of video content. Timmy had his name randomly drawn from a hat. Now I'm really looking forward to working with him during this episode, because he's earned it. In Paleo, players must survive as ancient cave people while completing a series of minor quests, all of which accumulate in their ultimate long-term goal, painting a woolly mammoth on the wall of their cave. It's the, it's the Neanderthals version of hanging a Pulp Fiction poster in their dorm room. A Paleo is a cooperative deck, bag, and pool building game of prehistoric exploration that also includes multiple modules that allow for a variety of people, locations, quests, and other things to encounter during the player's prehistoric adventures. And it's not, as I had first assumed, a game about a diet consisting of lean meats, fish, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And if you didn't like that joke, it, w it was written by Timmy as well. In the castles of Tuscany, players are influential royals in the 15th century, making creative decisions as they build their once modest regions into flourishing domains. By supporting towns, villages, and monasteries, or by extracting marble and delivering goods, players see their lands grow, earning them points and prestige. And after three rounds, the winner is the player who has accumulated the most victory points. New players may be unclear on a few of the game's rules, so Board Game Geek user Rainier P has taken the liberty of helping answer potential questions by posting an unofficial fact on the game's page, which we'll include a link to in this video's description. This fact can be a great companion piece to the game's Watch It Play tutorial video, which features our very own Rodney Spith, who is reportedly Timmy Spangler's favorite member of the Watch It Played team, because of course he is. When asked to comment on this new discovery, Mr. Smith was quoted as saying, Oh, well that's very flattering. Here, Chaz, could you send this autographed Dead of Winter promo to Timmy? And Mr. Marler was quoted as saying, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother sending this promo to that little creep. To which Mr. Smith replied, nothing, because Mr. Marler made sure to mutter it quietly to himself after he had left the room. Dwellings of Eldervale is an epic worker placement game set in a once-lost magical world in which giant elemental monsters roam the landscape. Dragons, wizards, and warriors all battle for dominance over eight elemental realms, while across town a modest baker named McDougal just wants one day of peace so he can concentrate on running his family bakery. Dwellings of Eldervale by Breaking Games blends worker placement, area control, engine building, and unique worker units. 
The game's ambitious Kickstarter campaign, funded in June 2019, was in production throughout most of 2020, and started shipping to backers several weeks ago, with plans to release its retail version within the next couple months. Next up is an expansion for the epic space opera in a box, the Prophecy of Kings for this guy right here. Well, that's the third edition. It's the fourth, the fourth edition is way, it's just on, it's too far away. Twilight Imperium, fourth edition. Smooth. What do you add to the game that already has everything in it? Why, everything else, of course. This expansion has 40 new systems and hyperlane tiles to add new planets and obstacles to the map two new component colors to add support for playing the game with up to eight players, meaning that now Thursday through next Tuesday can very well be spent playing nearly half a game of Twilight Imperium. The expansion also introduces a wealth of leader cards, each having unique powers, new ground forces in the form of lumbering mechs, and new exploration decks that provide new discoveries, in addition to new action cards, agenda cards, objective technologies, promissory notes, legendary planets, and more. Let's talk about February, because if you've missed out on this expansion's initial print run, rumor has it that another print run is coming to retail as early as February 2021. And speaking of February, Timmy Spangler informs us that February is a frog's favorite month of the year because it contains Leap Day. <laughs> oh god, I don't know what's worse. Half my jokes are written by a grade schooler, or that's so difficult to tell which ones are which. Climbing up to spot number 6 this month is 2012's War of the Ring 2nd Edition from Ares Games. War of the Ring is a two-player game that takes place in the world of J.R.R. Tolkien, in which one player takes control of the Free Peoples, while the other player controls the Sinister Shadow Armies. The game can be won by a military victory, if Sauron conquers a certain number of Free People cities and strongholds, or vice versa. But the true hope of the Free Peoples lies in the Ring Bearer, who, while armies clash across Middle-earth, is trying to secretly reach Mount Doom to destroy the One Ring. Now, one reason that War of the Ring rises through the ranks this month is the launch of this year's War of the Ring annual online tournament. On the game's Board Game Geek forums, user Andre M recently posted that its newest league season will be starting really soon. This league is a tournament which will run throughout the rest of the year, and in it, participants will challenge others from nations across the globe. The league is designed to be competitive, but casual, encouraging a schedule of around a game every three weeks or so on average, with completing them being optional. And we'll include a link in this video's description to more information about this league, just in case you'd like to check it out, or even join in. And joining us right now is Rodney, with information about the other sponsor that helped make this episode possible, Marvel Gaming Accessories from Upper Deck. Thanks, Timmy. You're doing excellent work. And Chaz, too, I suppose. Sure. Thank you. Upper Deck recently announced a new line of gaming mats and card sleeves, featuring fan-favorite Marvel superheroes and villains. For example, the cover of the sensational Spider-Man number 23 is on this mat in the series, with sleeves featuring the web head as well. But you can also show your darker side, with mats and sleeves featuring Thanos wielding the mighty Infinity Gauntlet as he faces off against the unrelenting Avengers, or performing his infamous snap when Thanos instantaneously erased half the universe. Wait a second, that's like a spoiler. Chaz, are we putting spoilers in these episodes? Timmy would never have made that mistake. Wolverine rounds out the third game mat in the series with imagery that many fans will remember from the cover of Wolverine Volume 1 Hunting Season. Each mat is rubber-backed, measuring 24 by 13 and a half inches, and new sleeves are going to be released monthly, including Black Panther, Thor, Miss Marvel, Black Widow, Venom, The Hulk, and more. All these many sleeves and mats can be found at your friendly local game store or at UpperDeckStore.com by following this link in the video's description. Next up is Cloud Age, a strategy game in which a mysterious secret society known only as Cloud has set fire to countless oil production sites and burned down large forests to destabilize the world. The resulting environmental catastrophe had a disastrous impact on the planet's environment and network television programming schedules. And now, years later, players travel above the dried out landscape in airships searching for a better life, visiting cities, sending out drones to collect resources, and battling cloud militia. Cloud Age is a mix of engine building, deck building, and resource management. 
and a campaign system allows new players to start playing quickly with elements being introduced into the game as they progress through the chapters. Additionally, standalone spin-off stories can also be played as single one-off scenarios. The delivery of Cloud Age, like so many games last year, was delayed past its original estimate. But reportedly, the game finally reached fulfillment centers earlier this month. So keep an eye out for it if Cloud Age is a game that you're serious about playing. <laughs> serious. Hey, hey, that Spangler. Serious. That's how you do it. In spot number four, we have Barrage, a strategic resource management game in which players compete to build majestic dams, increase their storage capacity, and deliver electricity through pressure tunnels connected to energy turbines of their powerhouses. Now, over the course of five rounds, players fulfill power requirements and complete personal contracts. At the same time, they also manage a limited number of engineers in order to enhance their machinery, acquire new construction actions, and build special buildings, all in an effort to gain the most power so they can gain the most power. The original Kickstarter version of the game reportedly contains some issues with components that the recent retail version is said to fix, which is an idea that brings up a new segment that Timmy came up with, our Momenten Question. Oh dang, that's... That's, that's pretty clever. Okay, so what stupid question did Timmy come up with here? All right, so do you think that Kickstarter, by its nature, pushes publishers towards shipping beta versions of games to project backers? Or do straight-to-retail game releases also have just as many issues as their Kickstarter counterparts? In the comments, let us know what your experience with the quality of Kickstarter versus non-Kickstarter games have been. Follow-up question. Would you agree with me that Timmy Spangler is a total suck-up? I mean, I'm sure Rodney must see right through his lame question segment idea, but he's a jerk, right? And rounding out our top three biggest movers this month is the recently crowdfunded ISS Vanguard from Awaken Realms. This one to four player cooperative campaign game puts players on board the first human ship to venture into deep space. Its campaign mode features a storyline full of challenging choices, twists, and branching storylines. Gameplay is divided into two phases. In the first phase, players manage their ship, represented by a binder with printed card sleeves. And then, they select crew and supplies for their next mission as they search for answers to humanity's biggest questions. Why are we here? Where are we going? And can we have sandwiches once we get there? As we recently reported on our Cult of the News show, hosted by our very own newsman and Timmy Spangler's second choice for an autograph, Matthew Jude, ISS Vanguard's crowdfunding campaign took place on a website called GameFound instead of Kickstarter. GameFound is operated by Awaken Realm's sister company, and it makes me wonder if the percentage of board games financed on that platform will continue to increase over the course of this year. Or if the majority of publishers will continue to crowdfund their campaigns on Kickstarter, because that's where the majority of backers are currently still looking. I suppose, really, time will tell us which one will become board gaming's next funding destination, and if we'll be able to have a sandwich when we get to that destination. Vindication is not only what you fill after convincing your company to reassign your contest-winning kitty co-writer to a different position, perhaps even another department, but it's also a strategic board game from the publisher Orange Nebula. Using resource management strategies, area control tactics, and freeform action selection, players will attempt to overcome the deserted island they find themselves so stranded on while they add companions to their party, acquire bizarre relics, attain potent character traits, and defeat a host of unusual monsters. Vindication has several distinctive endgame triggers that can be affected through the course of the game, over 72 card abilities that can be merged in unusual ways for potent combinations, and varying tile placement, making each game different, hence the variousness of it, giving a high playability. Where's Timmy when you need to play something on him? <laughs> Vindication, published in 2018, likely gained a shot of momentum this month, in part, thanks to the recent Kickstarter for its second expansion, Chronicles. The Chronicles expands the story with narrative choice chronicle cards, which lead to decisions that are recorded on new player character sheets. Additionally, dozens of unique events change the game state in dynamic ways, earning huge rewards for whichever player resolves them. 
Now that Chronicles is funded, it's estimated to be released in summer 2022. And bursting into the top spot this month, like some sort of sci-fi movie special effect, is Aliens Another Glorious Day in the Core, a cooperative survival board game in which a team of colonial marines scour the vacant outpost Hadley's Hope in search for survivors and answers. But the players are not alone in their journey, of course, and to survive, they're going to need to work together, stay alert, and fight off the relentless xenomorph ambushes that await them. A half dozen missions lead players through different areas of the ominous outpost, from the facility to the deep dark recesses of a xenomorph nest. A campaign mode links several missions together, requiring players to endure relentless xenomorph attacks and keep each other alive all the way to the end. Explore, scavenge weapons and gear, and above all, stay frosty. Otherwise you're, you're not going to last 17 hours, let alone 17 days. Now there's also two expansions and a pack of additional assets and hazards that were also simultaneously released along with the base game, all of which have been harder to find than a little girl hiding in the ventilation ductwork. And I'd like to end this episode by taking a moment to congratulate the newest member of our writing staff, Timmy Spangler, who, I have just been informed, has been reassigned to the position of head writer, making him now my direct supervisor. So here's some links to some videos or something, because I've got to go pick up our head writer from soccer practice. Hope they're handing out orange slices today. <laughs>